frequency. In this talk, we'll be connecting uh, two things. Uh, so first of all, a bit of philosophy, so epistemology of knowledge hall, discussing philosophy, and then the automated planning in AI. So this planning is one of the subfields of AI. So AI is not only about machine learning, but there are also other subfields and automated planning is one of the important one. Okay, so the way to connect uh, these two is via the logic of knowing how, as uh, say Julius introduced um, earlier. So I've been working on logics of knowing WH for quite a long time. So the logic uh, of knowing how is sort of the bridge of these two between uh, philosophy and AI. Okay, so more uh, precisely what we are going to do is to connect uh, AI planning and knowing how in a bi-directional kind of connection. So first of all, we'll be doing planning based know-how. So we will uh, use the idea of automated planning in AI to help us to understand better about the semantics of knowing how expressions. And then we will go the other, uh, the other way around. So we will be using the formalized knowing how to do AI planning with some more complicated goals and more interesting scenarios. So that's the uh, general idea of this talk. Okay, so uh, here is the, sorry, there is something wrong with the, yeah. Okay, so there are some warnings. So since uh, I've been talking about some kind of uh, interdisciplinary uh, work, so for different audience, they may expect different things. But uh, I have to warn you that I won't uh, demonstrate any kind of a practical AI um, uh, problems. Uh, because this work, at least at this stage, is theoretical. Um, in general. So this is sort of theoretical foundation for applications in AI. But uh, I'm also looking forward to collaborations with more AI researchers to make actual uh, practical tools to apply the theoretical framework we develop for real applications. And also for uh, philosophers, uh, we will be talking about, we'll be touching some uh, philosophical questions, but they are not the focus of this talk. Uh, as you will see, by having certain uh, logical framework, we can raise new philosophical questions, but the, the point of the talk is not to answer them. Uh, we'll be focusing on the connection between philosophy and AI using the logic as the bridge. And also as a logician, actually we have, um, um, maybe you know the logicians are good at manipulating symbols and uh, we have a lot of uh, uh, like mathematical looking, uh, say, uh, well, content. So I would try to minimize the technical content for the general audience because I, if I understood correctly, this is sort of more public talk. So I will be talking more about ideas, but there will be symbols and the jargon in logic and AI and philosophy, but I will explain them, uh, well, in a more intuitive way. Okay, so this is the outline of the talk. So I will first uh, give some background of this work uh, because we're talking about the three things. So I will briefly introduce these three things, a bit of philosophy, a bit of AI planning, uh, and a bit of epistemic logic of knowing WH, in particular knowing how. And then we will do this uh, bi-directional connection. So from one way to the other and back. So this is the plan of the, the talk. Okay, let's start uh, with some uh, very brief philosophical discussion. So the literature of epistemology mainly focuses on propositional knowledge, at least in the traditional way. 
I mean, um, this propositional knowledge is usually expressed in terms of knowing that phi, you know, that phi is true. And uh, however, uh, knowledge is not only expressed in terms of knowing that, because uh, you will see in everyday life and in academic communications, we often say knowing whether, knowing what, knowing how, why, and so on. Um, if you Google them, I mean, Google these uh, uh, expressions, you will see they are very often used uh, by people in everyday life. So actually the hits of, for example, knowing what or knowing how is roughly, well, at the same amount like knowing that. So it's really frequently used. And a, a very um, natural question is that, what kind of knowledge these expressions are uh, expressing? In particular, for a philosopher, we want to know when you say you know why, or when you say you know how to swim, what you are talking about. Uh, you must be talking about some kind of knowledge, but what is this kind of knowledge? Are they different from the usual propositional knowledge expressed by knowing that? So this is one of the central questions for philosophers to, to answer. Well, in recent years, there are more and more discussions about the relationship between knowledge how, I mean, the knowledge expressed by uh, knowing how, and knowledge that. So uh, the most important question is whether this knowledge how can be reduced to knowledge that. So there are two uh, opposing stance to answer these questions among philosophers. For anti-intellectualists, they say no, knowledge how cannot be reduced to knowledge that. For example, knowing how to swim is not a propositional knowledge clearly. But what is this knowledge how then? So some idea says, well, it's just some kind of ability, right? Knowing how to swim is like, you know, the, you have the ability to swim. On the other hand, uh, from the intellectualism perspective, uh, some people may also say, well, to some extent, knowledge how can be reduced to knowledge that, especially when you consider some, uh, say, evidence or insights from linguistics. When you consider the uh, formal semantics of uh, knowing how uh, expressions, you will see it's very closely related to uh, knowing that. Uh, in some very uh, important way. For example, Stanley Williamson famously argued in this line. Okay, so if you are interesting, uh, interested in such kind of uh, discussions, you can check the uh, field paper uh, the website on this topic. There are a lot of, lot of uh, papers about this. Okay, so just give you some taste. Some people, well, in the general audience may think, okay, so why knowledge how is not just ability? I mean, it's uh, rather clear, right? It looks like uh, ability, but there are a lot of examples like, um, so we have ability to digest. We have abilities to lift some rather light uh, bag, but uh, usually we won't say, I know how to digest or I know how to lift a five kilo bag. It's kind of too trivial or it's, you don't use your brain for that. Yeah. And uh, there are also many other examples like, uh, for example, let's see, uh, some, well, maybe just by pure luck, some monkey can play some piece of music but uh, does it know how? Well, uh, you may say, okay, that's by pure luck. Uh, so if this monkey just randomly jump uh, on a piano and play a, um, a piece of music by accident, uh, well, it doesn't know how. But then what about a well-trained piano monkey? So this monkey can play this piece of music um, well, rather nicely every time. But um, is there a knowledge how 
uh, well, according to this monkey. Okay. And also there are interesting examples saying, okay, so imagine uh, a pianist just had a um, accident and uh, he broke his arm. Uh, now, do we say this uh, pianist doesn't know how to play the piano? Well, from the ability sort of account for knowledge, how this uh, pianist doesn't have the ability right now to play the piano, but I think many people would agree that the pianist still knows how to play the piano. So there is not a very simple answer whether this knowledge how is simply the ability or uh, this knowledge how it can be easily reduced to knowledge that. Okay, so there are further insights from the philosophical discussions. So we'll come back to this. Okay, so this is the first piece of the background. And uh, the second piece is about uh, automated planning in artificial intelligence. Uh, well, in a nutshell, um, say this planning in AI is just to find a plan to turn something uncertain or false into something certain and true. So basically, uh, the planning problem is you have a goal to realize, and you need to have a plan to realize this goal. So that's the basic idea. And uh, the uh, usual non-trivial planning uh, happens when you have a very source of uncertainty. For example, you may have um, uncertainty about the initial states, or you may have uncertainty about your observational power, or you are not sure whether um, when you do something, the consequence is certain. I mean, you, you may not sure, uh, well, if you try to pull open the door, maybe it's locked, then you cannot pull it open like this. So depending on the type of uncertainties and uh, whether, and also the type of plan you consider, uh, you may have various notions of planning. Uh, you can also imagine, okay, so the type of plan is also important. Uh, the easiest plan is just one action, and you can turn, well, make it more interesting by having linear sequence of actions, or you can have, a, say, a, a branching actions. Depending on what you see, you can select different actions to do. So you may have various notions of plan, and accordingly, you have various notions of planning. Yeah. To give you a more concrete idea of planning, let's see some example. Okay, so this is actually a picture of a map uh, near some piece of uh, Great Wall in Beijing. So if you can read Chinese, you can see various places. And uh, if you look closely, um, there are some English underneath the Chinese, right? Uh, let me enlarge them. Okay, actually, this is, I think this is supposed to be a mistake. So. Everywhere, uh, the English is not a translation about this Chinese name, but simply you are here. <laughs> so when imagine uh, a foreigner standing in front of this map, so well, he or she will be puzzled. So you are sort of everywhere, right? So when you have a map, but you don't know where you are, I mean, it's still troublesome, right? If you want to navigate yourself to, uh, to go to a certain place, you need to think and uh, probably use some logic, right? Mm -hmm. To make it more concrete, so let's consider this uh, simple uh, example. So imagine a rookie spy sneaking in an enemy building, like in the movie slot, like Mission Impossible or so on. And usually this spy uh, is guided by some headquarter. So he or she has this uh, earphone and the headquarter will say, okay, so go straight and uh, be careful if someone is coming in and uh, hide somewhere. But as in those movies, the communication with the headquarter is supposed to be lost at some point and uh, you're on your own in this enemy building. So now suppose someone spotted this uh, rookie spy and put an alarm in panic, this spy got lost. Okay, 
However, this pi has the map of the floor. So this is sort of the abstraction of the map. So you have different places like rooms and they are connected to uh, with some corridors, uh, maybe some one-way corridor. There are some uh, gates you cannot go back. So this R means uh, from here you can go right to here. And this U means from here you can go upstairs to some other places. And there are some safe, uh, well, uh, places marked on the map, although in in the real building you won't see the safe sign because safe sign means okay there is no video camera you can safely hide there or, or something like that. Okay, so because uh, uh, this spy was in panic, so he is currently not sure whether he's at S two or at S three. Although, well, from the external view, uh, if you're God, uh, you, you would see, well, he's actually at, uh, well, this room uh, as three. Yeah, okay. So now the uh, question is, does this spy have a plan to make sure he will be safe? Okay. So you can think about it uh, for a while. So there are some uncertainty. You don't know where you are, but you want to be safe by making a good plan, right? Uh, okay, so what about just going right or going up? Because you are actually here. So when you go right, you'll be safe. When you go up, you will be safe too. But the trouble is, I mean, this spy doesn't know where he is right now. Although we, we know where he is. So he can a uh, reasoning like this. So what if uh, I'm here? So if I'm here, then going right, I won't be safe. If I'm here at S2, going up, I won't be safe either. So going right or going up, uh, they are not good plan, given the uncertainty this pie has. But can you, can you think about a, a good plan? to always make sure you will be safe after executing it. Okay, I think you will be, um, you will find one. So one uh, reasonable plan is first go right and then go up. This is a good plan because no matter whether uh, you are here or you are here, going right and up, going right and up, you will be safe eventually. Right? So this is a good plan, given your uncertainty. So to find this kind of plan is the so-called conformant planning in artificial intelligence. And uh, you can formalize this uh, mathematically. You can find a good algorithm to do it fast. So that's the one type of planning in artificial intelligence. We will come back to this uh, running example in our later parts of the talk. Okay, so the third uh, background is about uh, epistemic logic, which is some sort of uh, logic to reason about propositional knowledge and belief. Okay, so uh, well, if you know logic, there must be a formal language where you can express some things, some abstract things. Okay, so in epistemic logic, you can express uh, H and I knows that phi. So in this kind of symbol, okay. And uh, of course you can express more complicated expressions like uh, agent I knows that phi and agent I knows that agent J doesn't know phi. And uh, but, uh, well, agent J knows that agent I knows phi or agent I knows not phi, which means agent I knows whether phi. Okay, so you can express all kinds of interesting uh, statement. And you need to give uh, semantics uh, to this, uh, well, uh, expressions in the logical language. Uh, so you have model and you give uh, truth values for formulas on models. But I won't go into the details, just want to mention that in this uh, picture of uh, epistemic logic, uh, when can you say you know that fact? Okay, so uh, you know that phi, if and only if phi is true in all the epistemic 
alternatives that you cannot distinguish from your actual world. Well, this sounds a little bit abstract. I will just give you a brief example. So for example, this P says New York, it is raining in New York. However, I, well, because I'm standing here in my office in Beijing and I, I didn't check the weather report. So I can think about uh, two possible situations. One is New York is it's raining in New York. The other is it's not raining in New York. And I don't know which one is the real world, right? I cannot distinguish these two. For these two are both fine. So in this case, I don't know that P, right? Okay, so only when you can rule out all the, um, uh, well, P force uh, possibilities, you can say you know that P. So that's the idea of the semantics for this epistemic logic. Okay, so uh, while well, for logic, you also have, say, um, uh, proof systems, and this is the idealized sort of uh, proof system for uh, well, standard epistemic logic, where you have axiom says, well, if something is qualified as uh, knowledge for you, it must be true. And uh, if you know something, then you know that you know something. If you don't know something, then you know that you don't know something. Of course, these axioms are debatable philosophically. And actually, for example, this one is usually called KK principle in philosophy. And you have uh, hundreds of uh, well, papers discussing whether this is reasonable or not uh, in the literature. And uh, if you are Chinese, you can read uh, this one. <laughs> this is actually uh, Confucius teaching. So it says, well, if you know it, then you should admit you know it. If you don't know it, then you should admit you don't know it. And that's knowledge. And I think these things are sort of uh, uh, in parallel with these uh, axioms we have, um, just for fun. OK, so the standard picture, uh, standard framework of epistemic logic has been successfully applied to not only philosophy, but also theoretical computer science, where people also want to assign knowledge to computers, to distributed systems, to many other artificial uh, agents or um, machines, and also to AI. OK. But as we have seen already, uh, knowledge is not only expressed in terms of knowing that, you can say a lot of knowing why, knowing how stuff. And also more interestingly, you can combine them. For example, I don't know how to win the game, but I know that she knows how, and I know why she knows, right? All these things are interesting. So how do we reason about this kind of uh, expressions? There's supposed to be some knowledge, right? So epistemic knowledge, uh, logic is about reasoning about knowledge, but it's not equivalent to reasoning about knowledge expressed by only knowing that. So there are knowing WH uh, expressions. They are also interesting. Uh, however, despite early discussions by Hindika, uh, say, logic uh, of knowing WH is seldom discussed in the literature of uh, epistemic logic. So it's a pity. So in the past years, uh, I have been trying to promote uh, a systematic study of this kind of logic. And the one thing you notice from uh, Hindika's early discussion is that when you talk about knowledge that, well, actually propositional model logic is it's just enough. But when you move to knowledge double H, you need quantifiers. You need the first order model logic. For example, when you say knowing who murdered John can be formalized by having this formula. So first of all, there is an existential quantifier. There is someone, and you know that this someone murdered John. So that's the meaning of knowing who murdered John. You can compare with this one when you swap the knowledge operator and the essential quantifier. And it only says, you know, someone murdered John. So this is exactly the Deray and the Dicto distinction in uh, philosophy. However, by having all the 
uh, quantifiers and the modal the modality together, you will make trouble. So there are a lot of uh, philosophical and technical troubles for the full first order model logic language. And especially the computational aspect is really bad. So it sort of block its use in many uh, applications. So I try to do better by a sort of a minimalist uh, approach. So instead of having all these quantifiers and the stuff, I try to pack, uh, say, quantifiers and modalities together to have the so-called bundles and to introduce specific uh, modalities for them. So in this way, we can uh, restrict the use of quantifiers and uh, try to balance the expressivity of the logic and the complexity computationally. And it's very natural and succinct to express some interesting properties and you can have very intuitive axioms and so on. So it also leads to Decidable fragments of first order model logic, some intuitive understanding of non classical logic, like intuitionistic logic, and some new semantics for the antique logic. I don't have time to go into this. So, over the years, uh, we um, have more and more people who are uh, involved uh, in making uh, all kinds of knowing WH logic possible. And uh, uh, we studied uh, knowing whether, knowing what, knowing how and why. And if you are interested in this kind of um, ideas, so you can check my earlier survey paper here. Okay, now we're ready to see the connection. So we will be using the logic of knowing double H to bridge epistemology and uh, AI planning. So I understood I have uh, like uh, uh, 15 minutes, right? Uh, Julius. Okay, so I will try to finish in time. Okay, first of all, from planning to know-how. So we will be using the AI planning idea and some kind of philosophy to formalize what do we mean by knowing how. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so some clarification. So we will be focusing on a particular type of uh, knowing how, which we call goal directed. So essentially, it's knowing how to realize a goal. Like I know how to go to Beijing, is to realize the state that I am in Beijing, or I know how to know the answer to to realize the the goal of knowing the answer and so on. We will not be talking about uh, other so-called activity-directed know-how, like knowing how to swim and so on. And also we don't talk about, uh, I know how happy she is, or I know how to behave at the, at the dinner table, so, okay? Okay, so there are some observations and ideas from the, the existing discussions in philosophy uh, for us to, as a logician, to formalize the formal semantics of uh, knowing how. For example, uh, from the um, intellectualism uh, sort of account, um, well, Stanley and Williamson famously argue that um, knowing how to F can be break down into the following. So there is a way W such that it is a way for this agent to F. And uh, this agent knows that this W is, a, is indeed a way to do F. And also this agent entertain this proposition uh, under some kind of uh, practical mode of presentation while intuitively this agent sort of know um, how to execute this uh, this way? Uh, well, actually, yeah. And uh, the other, so so you can already see there is some similarity with uh, sort of the Hindika's view about uh, knowledge uh, WH expressions because there is uh, a existential quantifier here, and that there are something about know that 
and uh, some extra things. We'll be using this idea to give the formal semantics. And uh, also in the literature uh, philosophical discussion, it's very important that uh, if you can just by chance uh, achieving something using some um, methods or ways or plan, it's not enough to say you know how. You have to knowingly guarantee the result, right? But how to turn these ideas into rigorous uh, definitions of semantics for the knowing how operator in the logic? That's where we borrow the idea of AI planning. Okay. Okay, so in a very, uh, well, uh, very briefly, um, Agent I knows how to achieve phi. We write in the logical language KHI phi to be read as knowing, uh, Agent I knows how to achieve phi. It roughly means there is some plan. So plan in the sense in AI planning. There is some plan sigma such that this agent I knows that executing this plan will make sure phi. And actually there are more conditions in AI planning. So uh, you not only knows that, well, executing this plan will make sure phi. Also you have to know this plan can be executed fully. Okay, so these kind of ideas are uh, implicit in the uh, definitions of, for example, conformant planning in AI. Okay, so if you write it in logical language, so it's roughly this, but uh, uh, we will um, sort of uh, pack this thing into the unique uh, modality like this. Well, rather than introducing quantifiers and so on. Okay. But there are various notions of plans in planning. So there are linear plan, conditional plan, knowledge-based plan, plans with loop, and so on. And there, there are so many notions of planning correspondingly. So a question would be, okay, whether choosing different notion of plan and the planning will lead to different logic, right? But we'll see under certain condition, they will well, induce exactly the same logic. Okay, so we uh, what we did uh, in the past, we study this kind of uh, uh, logic where we can express both know that and know how together and study their computational aspects. Okay, so let's come back to this uh, very simple uh, example we mentioned for planning. So actually, when we say, when we ask this question, whether this uh, rookie uh, spy has uh, a, a good plan to make sure he will be safe, you can also ask simply whether he knows how to be safe. So that's the connection between planning and the, well, know-how stuff. Okay, so as we see already, this uh, RU plan will be uh, good enough for him to be safe. Okay, so, well, intuitively uh, knowing how phi is true in this model, given this uncertainty about the actual position of the agent, well, this is true if, if and only if there is a linear plan well, linear plan is a sequence of actions such that you know that this linear plan is always fully executable and it can get you to some phi world uh, in the end. So you know how to make sure phi means this kind of thing. And you can check this RU thing is always executable no matter whether you go from here or here and eventually you will be safe. So that's the way we give uh, the semantics to knowing how expressions using the idea of planning. But as we mentioned, there are uh, various different uh, notions of plans and the linear plan is one of the simplest plan. And the more interesting plan is uh, so-called the conditional plan or branching plan. Uh, where you can use conditions to select different branches 
like, okay, if I know P, then I do A. If I know Q, then I do B, something like that. And if you take that thing and give a proper uh, semantics, you can have uh, a, well, we don't have time to go into the semantics, but uh, given a reasonable semantics based on this kind of conditional plan where you call it strat strategy-based plan, you will have a nice logic, which is very similar to the standard epistemic logic. So as I mentioned, uh, we have, uh, say, know that operator in the language. And then we also have the usual know that axioms uh, in the ideal, uh, well, idealized um, situation. But more interesting is about the interaction between know that and know how. For example, this axiom says, if you know that P, then you, then you know how P. Why? Because you, you already know P is true, then you can just select doing nothing as a good plan, right? And for this one, it's also called preferred call. So if you know how to achieve, uh, make sure P, then you know how to make sure that you know P. Because once you can make sure P, then you are sure after doing this, you will know P, right? If you are not forgetful. And the, this one is uh, introspection for know-how. So if you know how to achieve P, then you know that you know how to achieve P. So for your own, um, know how you have uh, introspection. And this is the, probably the most interesting, uh, well, signature, say, axiom for know-how. So if you know how to make sure you know how to make sure P, then you know how to make sure P. This is due to the compositionality of, uh, well, branching plan. Uh, so you can combine two-stage plan into one-stage plan. So some something like that. Of course, uh, like in the early days of epistemic logic, we can have all kinds of philosophical discussions about whether these axioms are reasonable, right? But for example, well, like the KK principle, so can you reflect on your own knowledge how? But for me, I think this um, introspection is a very interesting one because it sort of can tell the difference from knowledge how and uh, merely uh, ability accounts, right? If you have just some ability, maybe you don't know you have this ability, but when you know how, you should be able to reflect on your own knowledge how. I think it's sort of reasonable, but it, there, there can be a lot of discussions. And also, this kind of axioms can also tell apart different kinds of know-how. For example, as I mentioned here in this talk, we focus on so-called goal-directed know-how, so know-how to realize a goal. But if you allow activity know-how, like knowing how to swim, this um, say uh, axiom will be intuitively invalid. For example, you can say, I know how to make sure in the end, I know how to swim by paying big money to the uh, very good uh, trainer for swimming, right? But it doesn't mean I know how to swim right now, right? So these axioms can tell you something about the know-how you want to discuss. But we don't have time to go into the details. So if, if you're interested, you can look at our paper. Okay, so let's move on. So, well, in general, you can use a programming language to specify all kinds of plans, like uh, uh, the branching plan or even the plan with loop, for example, this one. This one is kind of a programming, uh, it's a little program says, oh, uh, well, whenever you know, uh, you don't know that you are you are out of some maze. You have to do the following: you just keep going forward uh, until you hit some wall. Then you go left, something like this. So you can handle actually uh, plan uh, plans with loop and so on. So actually, in a recent paper published on artificial intelligence, we show that uh, actually 10 different notions of plans and planning 
if you use them as the uh, idea for defining a uh, know-how operator, uh, you will have the same logic, same know-how logic. So uh, you will see under some um, uh, very minor uh, assumption, there are some really logic core shared by different kinds of know-how based on different kinds of uh, uh, notions of planning. So it's uh, very interesting. Um, okay, so, uh, well, I have uh, maybe five minutes or also maybe I will take a little bit more. Um, okay, so last bit is about uh, from um, know-how logic to AI planning. Okay. So uh, this direction, uh, well, first of all, we can see uh, because when we give the semantics for our know-how operator, we use the plan. Actually, we can do planning, well, by having the model checking uh, problem for our know-how formula. So actually when we can turn a planning problem in well, artificial intelligence into logic model checking problem uh, in our framework. But this is the most um, easy part. Um, okay, we can do much more because in AI planning, usually people only focus on planning with factual goals. Like, okay, so I want to be safe. I want to turn this uh, switch on or off. I want to do this and that, but that's all factual. But because our, in our language, this phi can be really general. It's not only just a factual uh, formula, it can contain other modalities. So we can actually handle much more. So the first thing is we can handle uh, no that goals. Like when you do planning, sometimes you want to make sure the good person knows something, but the bad person doesn't know something, right? That's very reasonable in various applica uh, applications. You can simply express this goal by some formula in our language, but this is only the beginning. So by just planning with no that goals is, well, this is not just equal to epistemic planning because we can replace this no that with more general uh, concepts, in particular, know-how. Okay, so in the recent um, paper, we propose the so-called higher order epistemic planning. So planning not only with usual know that epistemic goals, but we can have know-how goals. Because the know-how is now in the object language rather than in the meta language, so actually that's the trick of uh, model logic. Model logic takes a meta language uh, concept and bring it into the object uh, language and uh, do the formal things to discuss it. For example, you can say, um, my goal is to make sure phi and uh, also to make sure in the future I cannot turn it off. So this is expressed by this thing. And more interestingly, when you have uh, multiple agents, you can make sure, okay, you can make sure phi and you can also make sure agent two doesn't know how to turn it off. And even more, agent two knows that agent one knows how to turn it off. So you can, well, you, you may want to have a plan to make sure phi and uh, agent two doesn't know how to turn it off. Uh, and, uh, but it, well, he or she knows that you can still control this phi, the truth value of phi. And you can have uh, all kinds of interesting things by iterating the know-how uh, operator as the goal of your planning problem. So uh, this is planning with goals about planning itself. In this way, it's called higher water epistemic planning. So here I want to say logical language really matters because, okay, so you can do a lot of things with machine learning and so on, and so on but uh, well, in certain cases, you need the language to specify your goal or other things. Of course, this is not only just specify things. 
we can show, uh, well, if you do things on explicit models, you can still have a very um, uh, efficient algorithm to do the model checking for whatever cage formulas in the language. We can still have complete axiomatization. So we're finite models where computer science only care and the logic is still decidable. And all this will give you computational methods to do higher order uh, planning in reality, although we don't develop uh, tools right now. Um, okay. Okay, so I should uh, conclude uh, in just one minute. So let's go back to the beginning of the talk. So in this talk, we try to connect uh, a bit of philosophy with uh, AI, right? Via logic of knowing how as the bridge. So what we actually do is the bidirectional connection. So by using the idea of AI planning, uh, we can formalize uh, know-how um, in logic. Uh, and by use the know-how logic, we can do more planning. So that's the general idea. In the end, I just want to say philosophy and logic uh, still matter in AI, although many things think AI is only about machine learning, especially uh, deep learning, but I think they still matter. And AI can also inspire, say, formal accounts in philosophy and logic. I should stop. Thank you very much.